So continuing with our digital painting exercise, setting up your file. This is my digital painting file. I want to make sure it's a high enough resolution. So just to review, because we're making our own pixels, you want it to be at least 8 by 10 by 350. If at this stage you want to push it a little bit bigger to say 11 by 14 inches, or I'll make mine even bigger, like 14 by close to 18 inches. These are all close to standard sizes. That will allow us to print it up to 16 by 20 if you want. Photoshop can handle that. And at this stage, because we're just doing our sketching, all that does is soften the edges of our sketch a little bit. You go to image, image size, always to check your, your physical dimensions and your resolution. And the Photoshop will also tell it to you in the bottom left-hand corner except that I just changed it and it still says eight by 10. So that's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. So I don't know when that will change back to what it was <laughs> or what I just changed it to. But anyway, big enough, right? Big enough for your printing because every pixel you make now is something you want to keep and you don't want to have to resize later. You can always make things smaller and it will take get rid of pixels and it does that fairly accurately you know, to downsample it. But if you ever have to upsample pixels, all the computer can do is make a ring around each pixel with more of the same pixel. So edges get a lot softer. The other thing we need is our reference, right? Instead of just painting from imagination here to really try to control and get exposed to the digital painting techniques, no matter what kind of stylization we're using, we created these style sheets. Now let's open up the JPEG of it. I want to open up that style sheet, those references, color references, style references, subject references. Open those up in Photoshop as well. So I have two files open. And then I click on the file I'm going to paint on so that it stays on the, the left. And I go to Window, Arrange, Two Up Vertical. And I'll put them side by side. Why is that so helpful? Well, it allows me at any time to use this brush tool. Turn on this layer where I'm using the brush. And I can simply hold down Option, and it will change my brush into the eyedropper. And I can steal colors directly. Mm -hmm. So Option changes your brush to the eyedropper tool. So basically, we're going to learn how to customize brushes today, and then we're only ever going to use the brush tool. Now, I was showing you on that layer what rotoscoping is. Rotoscoping is when you take reference in, and then you just paint over the top of it, like so. But it's pretty limiting because you're only going to be able to match what's already in the photo. And there are tools within Photoshop. You can find lots of tutorials online about ways of doing digital painting, especially if you're trying to do match reality, kind of representational portraiture. And there is a tool under the brush called the mixer brush. And the mixer brush kind of takes the step of having to choose the color away from you. So What's interesting about it, I don't want us to use it this time, but it can, can be helpful sometimes, it's good to know about, is you can set it to be a wet brush, a dry brush, how it's going to um, split the, the mixing. And then what's interesting about it is you can set it to pick up the color from layers below. So here it says sample all layers. Let me see. And we're going to mix it with our foreground color. So if I want everything to be a little bit warmer, I'm going to take that load down. I'm going to mix it barely at all. Let's try a very wet brush mix. All right, there we go. 
So what you can see is, like with watercolor, it's basically mixing this foreground orange at 50%. I'll take that lower with the color. Up, I'll make it higher. Mixing is like how much you want to blend the color underneath in with the pixels underneath. Oh, I'm doing it on the wrong layer. <laughs> there we go. So it's kind of a quick way to do a, a rough underpainting. It looks like that. Right? It will actually take it in f at full opacity if the layer underneath is at full opacity. So if I want just kind of a soft or bristly underpainting, this is kind of how you can do it. And people will often use the mixer brush on later layers. So just, just so you know about those things. But right now I'm going to stop rotoscoping because what we were doing was just doing the kind of linear sketch. To remember the steps of digital painting, go to my downloads. Remember this under links helps us understand the difference between digital coloring behind a, a finished line art versus digital painting where we're just building on top. So I had done this sketch and then I had brought the photo reference over to kind of help tweak the sketch and map it. And now I'm going to tweak it a little bit more because this neck is what she would look like looking straight forward. But notice how her shoulders in this reference are angled. And so her neck is kind of pushed to one side because her spine's over here. So I'm going to change that and I'm just going to use the regular brush tool. And I guess I could use the eraser whenever I want to. And you can set that brush just like you would any other brush. And I'm going to erase the necks and the necklines I drew in just from a kind of a template point of view. And I'll use option on my brush. steal the the black line again i'm painting at about 70 percent and then i like that she has this high collar i think that's pretty cool and i like this shoulder width you know that activates well now her hair i might make a little less symmetrical even though i'm not going to show a wrap i'm going to show hair i don't need it to all be piled up on one side with some tablets, your stylus will actually have two ends. It will have an eraser end and a brush end. Sometimes that can be pretty helpful. But that is my sketch. You know, that's going to work pretty well. Now at this point, that's kind of a speed outline sketch. I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm going to use the advantages of digital art, which is Command T. I can make it kind of fill the space, but if I hold down shift, I can also distort it a little bit, stretch it a little bit, and I can also warp it just to give it a little bit more of what I want to emphasize. Now, warping might seem like I'm distorting reality, right? But this is the same thing that camera lenses do, <laughs> depending on what lens in less extremes, right? If you're zooming in, if you're pulling away, if you're far away and then zoom in, all of that will give you a different kind of curvature on your image. Like this image is kind of a close-up camera lens, which distorts. This one's a little bit further away, right? So you want to pick what kind of looks and feels right before you start your painting. And sometimes that can be fairly different than your original sketch. But I, I'm happy with that. I like that. You can also do little things, which I often do, which is to just take sections of it, like her eyes. If I really want to make her eyes a focal point, which her makeup definitely does, I can just take those and I can transform those on their own. Maybe warp them a little bit. I can make them upturned or downturned. I can give them kind of presence in the head. 
If I'm going for stylization where the eyes are bigger than they are normally, this is a nice, nice way to play with those different distortions, like a Simpsons version of Nina Simone or an anime version. All of these are options in your sketching using digital. So you can see that's pretty different. Now all of this is going to get replaced with paint anyway. So I get to kind of refine all of these decisions, but a sketch can definitely help you. And then of course you can just simply draw as well and kind of find your, your points. So if I want to tighten up this lower eyelid, for instance, then I can always just paint with white. That's why I do it at 70%. If I want to kind of indicate the highlight, I can do that in the eye. shape of the eye but you don't want to spend all of your time refining your sketch you just want to know where you're putting content okay the next step would then be basically what I'm going to show you here not here where is my there we go and this is to do what's called a speed painting. So not just a sketch, not a line sketch, but just shape sketching and base color filling. So if you don't want to deal with linear analysis of your subject at all, you just create a new layer. And I'll call this shape painting. And this will look chaotic, but it's, it actually could be quite effective. And the difference is, I'm still going to use a standard brush, but I'm going to use it much larger, where it really covers some space. Still pressure sensitive for size, and still at about 70%. And then I am simply going to pick a base color. You know, I could take it right from the photo. And I'm going to start in oil painting. This is called scumbling. You do it with horsehair brushes. You just kind of scribble it in and you get rid of the white. I'm going to block in some of the big forms I see. I might even try different color notes. The whole point here is to be thinking in terms of shapes. So I'm doing kind of that egg shape first. It can be soft edged. If you study the history of portrait painting, painters like Rembrandt made every edge soft, except for the one eye that's most in focus, that's nearest to the viewer. Everything else in his portrait paintings, which are very famous portrait paintings in art history, is incredibly soft and evocative. So you could play with that. Right now I'm creating most of my soft edges through just overlapping at 70% opacity. I'm going to put in some highlights. Let's do some shadows around the nose. And this is to show you that painting is more shape-based than line-based. It's different than digital coloring that way. If you have more of a drawing background than a painting background and you feel more comfortable finding all of your edges and kind of cleaning up outlines first, like we've seen in some of the, the demos in the slides for the dragons in digital paintings. And by all means, you can start this way. But if you're kind of happier with your painting style, being kind of searching and finding your shapes, layering up different shapes with big brush strokes, this can actually get you there sometimes a little bit faster. And you can start throwing color into it right away. Like her blue eyeshadow. I can use unusual colors to start building value. And there's a lot of squinting when I do shape painting because you're just trying to generalize the 